Welcome to War India News Hour. India is on the cusp of satellite broadband services by global giants. Satellite communication has become widespread and ubiquitous throughout the country for diverse applications catering to the sectors which are irreplaceable in serving the nation's interest. Satellite internet is a broadband internet service that uses radio waves to transmit the internet from an ISP hub to your satellite receiver dish which is attached with a modem to provide internet access. Some like SpaceX use lasers instead of radio waves to transmit the data. The radio waves are reflected in the receiver by geosynchronous low earth orbit satellites that are in a fixed position in the sky. The data is transmitted to the satellite. Satellite internet could be the next big step in internet connectivity. Once a fleet of satellites is in orbit, companies would only need to set up the satellite receiver and modem to provide access to the internet from almost any corner of the world. There is no need for cables or other ground-based infrastructure at the customer's access point. It would stand to revolutionize internet access the same way that the satellite DCHET broadcasting services did for television access in India. India is at the cusp of being a global hub for increased use of satellite communication which can attract billions of dollars as FDI, generate huge employment and enhance the GDP growth. About 40 billion dollars of private investments have already come in from major satellite broadband companies like Elon Musk's SpaceX, Amazon's Kuiper project and the Bharti Airtel bag OneWeb and Hughes are competing to become the biggest names in satellite internet in India. For a country like India, where providers would otherwise need to cover vast grounds with ground-based infrastructure, satellite internet provides an easy way to provide internet access to rural areas. Sunil Mittal Control UK based OneWeb had recently said that the company would start providing its services in India by 2022. The company has already launched 322 LEO satellites into space with a proposed fleet size of 650 satellites. Let's look into today's headlines in Var India. Government to hold a meeting with Wazirx, CoinDCX and other firms. For the first time ever, government officials have decided to hold an official meeting with the top stakeholders in the industry, including the crypto exchanges. The meeting has been scheduled for November 15 and will be held by the Lok Sabha. The government will be meeting the India Internet and Mobile Association Blockchain and Crypto Assets Council, which includes the top crypto exchanges of India, including Wazirx, CoinDCX, CoinSich Kuba, and others. The meeting will be a decisive event before the cryptocurrency bill, anticipated to be presented to the Parliament later this year. Hackers are bypassing two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is widely believed to be the best way to secure one's online account, but unfortunately, there is now a way with which hackers can bypass two-factor authentication. Hackers are using automated bots that call the victim and ask for the authentication code. These bots can be used by any hacker to trick gullible users into sharing their sensitive two-factor authentication in order to gain access to their accounts. Since the bot talk in a robotic voice on the call, people are more easily tricked into believing that the call is in need from the service firm, just as the hacker wants them to believe. But even if the hackers have a victim's username or email and password, possibly through a previous data breach, the authentication code is their Achilles heel. Make sure never to share it with anyone online and only use it yourself. Botanago botnet targets millions of IoT devices with 33 exploits. Researchers at AT&T discovered a new Botanago botnet that is using 33 exploits to target millions of routers and IoT devices. In the case of Botanago, only 6 out of 62 AV engines on virus total flag the sample as malicious and some identify it as Mirai. When installed, the malware will listen on two ports that is 31412 and 19412 where it waits for an IP address to be sent to it. Once one is received, the bot will exploit each vulnerability on that IP address to gain access. The malware uses different links to fetch a matching payload depending on the targeted device. Edtech startup Bright Champs raises 63 million dollars at 500 million dollar valuation. Edtech startup Bright Champs has raised 51 million dollars in a new financing round, valuing the company at a whopping 500 million dollars, bringing its total funding to 63 million dollars since its inception in July last year. Bright Champs offers online courses on programming and artificial intelligence among others for the K12 education segment and is currently operational in 10 foreign countries including in Southeast Asia and the Middle East. The company plans to expand its market in the US and Canada. It is yet to offer paid courses in India. Navid Chaudhary takes over as marketing head at Ingram Micro India. 
In Gram Micro promoted Navid Chaudhary as the marketing head by succeeding Salach Nanda Nayak, who joined the global marketing team as the APAC head of modern marketing. He is handling the new responsibility from November 1. Chaudhary was previously the marketing operations head. With an experience of 20 years in the field of marketing communications and brand management, Chaudhary joined the present company in 2012. He started his career as the assistant brand manager at DS Group and later joined Hamdard Lab as brand manager consumer products. That's all for now. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to War India News Magazine. You can download the War India app from Google Play Store and Apple App Store for the latest news and updates. Stay tuned. Thank you.